This girl is due to lay any day now. I actually have her marked due to lay in two more days, but uh, you know, it could be earlier, could be a little bit later, but you can definitely see that ridge on her right there. And she is full of eggs. In fact, if we look in that corner over there, you can see underneath her, she's actually propped herself. She's so full that the eggs is propping herself off of the bottom of the tub. So yeah, she is due to lay, which means we got to get an egg box ready. Hey guys, I'm Kai from Lucas Lane and Royals. Hope you're doing well. And as you just saw, I have a female that's going to be laying a clutch of eggs any day now. So I figured what I would do in this video is show you how I set up a egg tub. So for those of you who are new to ball python breeding and you're wondering what is an egg tub, well, you simply go to your nearest grocery store to the refrigerator section, usually in the back where they keep all the dairy products. There'll be an area where they have eggs and eggs usually come in uh, multiples of six and the container that holds those eggs is called an egg tub. Nah, I'm just playing. So the egg tub is basically a container that we're gonna use to hold those eggs and then that container itself with the eggs in it is going to go into the incubator. The incubator is going to be providing the heat. Uh, the temperatures set around 89 to 90 degrees. That's kind of the sweet spot. You can go a little bit higher, which will speed the incubation process, the development process. But just be careful, don't go too high because you'll end up cooking the eggs. Um, again, 89, 90 degrees Fahrenheit is usually the sweet spot. One degrees higher, two degrees higher. Uh, you'll start running into issues anything beyond that. Uh, you can also run the incubator lower. Um, that will just reduce the development, the speed of development. Um, I wouldn't go anywhere below like 86 degrees because it's, then it's probably not going to be developing correctly. Um, but the egg tub itself is going to be providing the humidity necessary for the egg to, to develop. So it's very important for the egg tub to have the necessary humidity without being too wet and causing the egg to drown. So now I'm gonna show you the materials for an egg tub. There's really just five components to the way I set up my egg tub. Number one is the container itself. Now this is just a plastic bin. Um, I like using plastic, it doesn't leak, it's inert. Um, you can scrub it down, make it clean. And you, and you can reuse it, it doesn't deteriorate over time. This one is a shoe box, and shoe boxes come usually between five quarts and six quarts. Um, you can also go a little bit bigger, 12, 16 quart tubs. Uh, I wouldn't go too big then because you're just wasting space. Um, but obviously if you have a large clutch, you might need a bigger tub. If you have a small clutch, you need a smaller tub. Just to give you a rough idea, this is a five quart tub shoe box, and I can fit about um, 10, ball python eggs if they're on the slightly smaller side and if they're on the bigger side uh, seven is the maximum I've done um, if they're on the bigger side so between seven and ten I usually shoot for eight if I palpate for a female and I notice there might be like nine or ten follicles maybe more then I'll either set up two of these or I have to go to the next size up um, and get like a 12 quart or 16 quart tub. But regardless of the tub size, the process to assemble everything is gonna be the same. So the tub is number one. And then number two is you need some kind of substrate. Now I'm using perlite, it's probably backwards on the camera for you, P-E-R-L-I-T-E. -E. Um, other substrates that you can use are vermiculite. Um, you can even use sand. I've seen some people use dirt from their backyard. Just be careful using things that may carry pathogens or bacteria. What you want to use is something that's inert um, and not going to harm the animal. So again, perlite is what I use. Um, other things might be sponges, sand, rubble, anything that's going to keep the water from sloshing around. Um, perlite is great because, well, it's pretty much inert. It's white. I like using white. It just looks clean. Um, and that's kind of why I use it. Uh, and then the next thing you want to use, what I use is a light diffuser. Now, this is just basically something to elevate the eggs off of the perlite because a perlite, essentially, we're going to add water 
to the perlite to keep it wet and that's what's going to give the egg box the humidity that it needs but we don't want it too wet because that's going to drown the eggs so in order to prevent that from happening to mitigate that risk we're going to use something to elevate the eggs off of the wet perlite uh, the light diffuser use is, is a great option uh, you can find these in your home improvement store they're usually near the ceiling tile section uh, this comes in a big panel and you can just break these off using a pair of pliers or shears um, they're, they're pretty easy to break off so you want something like this and break it to the side so it fits at the base of the the bin or the tub that you're using now the last thing i need are a couple straws now each of these are going to cut down into three sections and i'm going to use those pieces to pin the eggs inside the egg tub to prevent those eggs from rolling around and you'll see me do that later on in this video when I pull a clutch of eggs from a female and put this egg box to good use. Now before I show you how to assemble everything together, let me just explain how much perlite and water I use. As for perlite, I put about an inch and a quarter to inch and a half of perlite at the bottom of the tub. And then as for water, while well, I put water in and keep mixing it with the perlite until I see a little bit of pooling at the bottom. So if I move the perlite out of the way and I see the bottom of the tub and there's just a little bit of pooling of water that's when I know I have enough water uh, it's okay to go a little bit more it's okay to go a little bit less but just remember it's easier to add water than to remove the water once it's in there uh, the egg crates really going to help in this map in this case because it's going to sit on top of the wet perlite and basically elevate the eggs off so the eggs are never touching the wet perlite and preventing the eggs from ever wicking up the water and drowning the fetus or embryo that's inside. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at how I assemble everything together. Hope you enjoy the way I put together an egg box and I put it directly into the incubator allowing it to warm up. That way it'll be up to temperature by the time I have a clutch of eggs. And now all we have to do is wait. Luckily with the magic of YouTube and video editing, four days have passed and I got a clutch of eggs. And I am still wearing the same shirt. Don't judge. Right here is a big pied female. And uh, she just kept growing and growing. She didn't want to go for me. Um, this is their first year laying a clutch of eggs and I think she did pretty darn well. Let me go ahead and fix the camera for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get her off of those eggs without getting tagged. Oh, it's a nice clutch. You can see she is concave, really concave, all empty. 
So now that she's out of the way, we can take a look to see what we got. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine healthy eggs. No slugs so far, which is great. Knock on wood. Uh, let's see, what do we need to do? I want to get these eggs separated, which shouldn't be too hard because I think she just finished laying. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of roll them off, pull them apart, peel them apart. Try to get as much of this paper off as possible. The paper sometimes will mold. Oops. Let me see. Probably better to put them in the edge because there's a little bit of a groove in the edges of the tub. So that'll keep them from rolling around. That's what I'm going to be doing. So, all right. Let me speed this part up. So now that's done, I'm going to put them into the egg box that we made. kind of had a feeling this was a large clutch. I was concerned that it might be more than one egg box at hand also. I did make two, but I am going to try anyway to fit everything into one. So there's those straws that we had. And I'm going to cut these into sections of three. I'm just eyeballing it. And let's see, we'll put the eggs into the egg box first. And once I have them all kind of situated, I'll go ahead and candle all of them. Because what I did before was I used to candle them outside of the egg box. And then I would draw the line on top of the egg once I know the right side up. But sometimes I would redraw another line so each egg might have two lines and then the egg would roll to the other line and then I would end up with a drowned fetus or drowned embryo. So now I do everything in the egg box. Let me get a pencil or a pen I should. I should use a pen. So what I'm looking for are strong veins and I need the embryo to be on top. So far, this mom has been keeping them right side up. That looks to be right side up. All good. 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 This one looks to be a little bit off. You see it? The embryo is actually on this side. You can see the little dark curve. So if we turn it, you'll see the actual full circle. See the full circle? So that is where the embryo is. This one again is off to the side. See it's yellow on this side and the veins on this side. So I'm going to turn it so we get that circle right there to be facing up and this one is completely upside down don't know if the mom did that or if it's my fault but we'll turn it right side up I still think this egg box is a little bit too small for nine eggs I mean these are pretty large eggs so what I'll do is I'll split these into two egg boxes now. Because they've all been marked and there's only one line, one mark on each egg, I'm not too worried about them rolling out of position. I can always find that one mark. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these things out of the way so you guys have a better view of what I'm doing. So that's egg box number one. And then, like I said, I made two egg boxes just in case this would happen. And here's egg box number two. Also with two straws that I have to cut up. So what I think I'm gonna do is go four, five. I think that's sensible. I think that should do it. And now I'll just pop the lid on. Oh, by the way, you can see the condensation over here. So this is what I was talking about in regards to humidity. Um, and that's why it's important to put the egg box, once it's completely assembled into the incubator, let it warm up. Because as it's warming up, uh, the water inside will condense on the side of the tubs. And if you see condensation on the side of the tubs and on the lid like that, you know you have plenty of humidity inside. I'm gonna pop the lid on this one. Same thing on this one, the condensation's actually on this side. So I pop the lid on this one. And then in goes to the incubator. And in about 55 to 60 days, they should pip. And then we'll do an egg cutting video and see what we get. All right, so that's about it. Because this video is focused on how to set up an egg box, I'm not going to show you the mom and how I clean her off and all that stuff. But if you're interested in learning about that, go ahead and check out one of my other videos. In fact, I'll put a link to one of those up here in the corner so you can click on it and check it out. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and you want to be informed of future uploads, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching. Please share, stay at home, and I'll see you guys next time.